Okay, everybody, so it's kind of sweltery. I just did one video, kind of a, an odds and ends and some novels I bought and, you know, a little bit talking about Steve Ditko. And now I want to get back to uh, our Man of Steel review. I don't know if I'll get all three done tonight or if I'll just do this one and call it quits for tonight. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so uh, Man of Steel number four introduces us to Lex Luthor and you can see he still has hair. This is post-crisis Lex Luthor. You know, Crisis was probably about a year prior to this. Maybe it's just finishing up when this is coming out. And so we're being reintroduced to Superman. We're getting a new origin story through uh, this mini-series. And we, uh, last issue, number three, is where Superman and Batman meet for the first time. And um, the second issue, we meet Lois Lane for the first time and start to see Clark Kent slash Superman uh, develop his infatuation with her. Now one thing I found, so, uh, well here we go, it's like um, Lois Lane shows up at Clark Kent's place because they've got to go to this soiree and it turns out to be on Lex Luthor's lot, yacht. Now, um, here we get a little bit of background on, um, on how uh, Clark Kent is fitting in. This takes place about 18 months after his first appearance as Superman and so he's been working you know he scooped Lois at the end of uh, the second issue and that's how he got his job having no experience in reporting he got these exclusive on uh, Superman which I'm not sure if it was an interview of course he could just interview himself um, and so here we've got, you know, there's a, it almost feels like a little bit of filler. It's like they're explaining how he shaves. And to me, I didn't really care about that so much. And then when he comes back out, you know, it took, takes him about 10 minutes. He shaves by, uh, he's got a curved mirror and he shaves by, you know, doing that, uh, lasering his hair off. <laughs> yeah, that to me, that's a little silly, but um, who cares? And so he comes out and he finds Lois is working out with his weights. And she's curious how he maintains his physique when his weights are so light. And he's like, ooh, I uh, guess I just wanted to have some ex ex explanation for why I have this great build. And uh, even though I don't need to work out. And I guess I didn't take into account that um, I don't know what kind of weights I should be lifting. So anyways, it turns out that there's a helicopter, Lex's helicopter is waiting on the roof for Lois and Clark. And, uh, you know, Clark's all worried because the their building isn't rated for helicopters landing there. And he doesn't know if it's going to, the, the helicopter will support it. Then you have this huge, beautiful shot of the yacht. Um, and then, you know, uh, this is where we, now here, like, I've heard... Lex Luthor in the 90s, well this is it's still in the 80s, like I'd heard that um, they had sort of slipped some Donald Trump into him. Here his build and his look, he reminds me more of L. Ron Hubbard who had died, maybe the year this came out, I think Robert, uh, Hubbard died in uh, 86. I don't remember what month, and this came out in 86. So, you know, I'm not saying that anybody involved with this book is a Scientologist. I'm just saying that that was my impression the first time I see Lex Luthor in the book. I think he looks a bit like a, mid, a middle-aged L. Ron Hubbard. And so, you know, uh, this is going on, and it turns out that... Um, if you remember back to the Lois Lane, was it the Lois Lane or was it the very first issue? Anyways, um, Lex called uh, Lois over because he likes to collect things he can't have. And, you know, he was leaving for uh, South America and he was going to be gone a year. And so that's why this takes place about 18 months uh, later. But, you know, she really didn't want anything to do with him. And, uh, but she, uh, he found this dress and he gave her this dress and she thought he was just a loner for this party. And so she gets mad when she finds out it's a gift. She takes Clark's uh, jacket, uh, takes off the dress and gives it back. Now this is, uh, this reminds me a bit of stuff from Ayn Rand. It's been a little while since I read either The Fountainhead or, uh, or Atlas Shrugged. But this seems like, you know, one of the things Dagny might have done, or I can't remember 
who the female protagonist was from the Fountainhead. But, you know, if some man that she didn't have any interest in would try to buy her through giving her pretty things, she would, like, kind of reject it because she knew the kind of man she wanted. So then they got these pirates there, you know, and uh, they kill Clark Kent. They throw him overboard. And, like, everybody is kind of shocked. But, uh, of course, you know, Clark Kent is Superman, so he just uses it as a ploy. Uh, and so he lifts up the ship. And that gives Lois a chance to, I mean, you know, she's good at everything. She's kind of like um, Ray, what's her name, from the new Star Wars movies. And she, like, uh, kicks the bad guy in the nuts and takes his gun. Uh, then, like, Superman flies in. This is, like, what I like about it, about these books, is the covers, like, have everything. Like, the cover tells you everything that happens in there. You just don't necessarily know the context. It's, you know, they're almost like a, a flag or something. So, like, um, Lois is, like, firing the, the weapon over the bad guy's head, but then she gets distracted when Superman comes, or she doesn't see this guy here. So Superman gets in between Lois and the other gun. And then he just, like, you know, does the Superman thing. And then there's uh, Lex Luthor, and he goes, uh, you know, this is the mayor. The mayor is on the boat, and, like, you know, he's, he's thanking Superman. None of this could have done anything, uh, none of us could have done anything without your timely intervention, Superman. Uh, your magnificent distraction afforded Miss Lane the opportunity to act. Superman said, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm pleased to have helped. And then Lex comes in and he's like, uh, you were much more than that, Superman. You've earned every penny of this. And so he like tries to buy Superman off by giving him $25,000 because, he, you know, he believes he owns Metropolis and so he owns everything in it. And he goes, a check for $25,000? I don't think... It's a retainer, Superman. You're on my payroll now. Enjoy. He goes, uh, I'm very sorry, Mr. Luther, but there must be some misunderstanding. My services are not for hire. Nonsense. Everyone who's anyone in Metropolis works for me. You're far too valuable resource to, be un to leave undirected. And uh, it's like, not that you were really needed here, of course, as my security team is quite capable of handling, handling the situation. So we find out that uh, Lex could have ended the hostage standoff without anything happening because he's got crack security forces but instead he wanted to see how Superman would act so he you know the mayor gets pissed at that everybody gets pissed at him they uh, Lois still thinks Clark Kent is dead and then like Superman goes no I, I saved him before I saved all of you and but then like so, uh, the mayor tells uh, Superman to arrest, you know, he deputizes Superman and he tells him to arrest Lex Luthor. And Lex Luthor is completely humiliated and thrown into jail. Not that he's there for long. Um, then we have like, you know, um, this is like three days later. Uh, Superman's flying through this subway because he hears a woman is giving birth on the subway. And so he rescues her, or well, doesn't rescue her, he takes her to the hospital and he says like, you know, I don't have to fly at super fast speed, that would probably hurt your baby, but I'll get you to the hospital in time just the same. And, you know, and he's like feeling pretty good with himself because, you know, he just likes doing good deeds. And then there's Lex Luthor, and Lex Luthor says, I have a message for you, Superman. A message? Yes, a most important message. Uh, and quite probably the last. You made a mistake, Superman. Oh, some people are still shooting off fireworks. Uh, a potentially fatal mistake. I run this town, Superman. Metropolis belongs to me. The people here are mine. Nurture, mine to nurture or destroy, as I see fit. And uh, he does really remind me of some things I've read about L. Ron Hubbard. Anyways, and they've forgotten that and they've forgotten that they've looked at you with your costume and your flashy superhuman powers and they've forgotten who their master is who is number one and uh we got and i intend to remind them superman i'm going to show them nothing that you're nothing superman a cardboard cutout 
One day, very soon now, you're going to die, Superman. You're going to be destroyed, and you'll know who's doing it. Everyone in Metropolis will. Um, we, but no one will be able to prove it. I'll not be arrested, Superman, not ever again. Just remember, Superman, you're a dead man. And it's just a question of how soon. So, I don't know. That was, uh, overall, I enjoyed this uh, issue. Uh, like I say, it has some, st the, some things that I really didn't feel I needed. Uh, 